Fatal Fury Legend of the Hungry Wolf might be the worst fighting game adaptation ever made. At least top three. Alright, so we start off with three ninjas randomly killing these guys in the most anticlimactic murders I think I've ever seen in an anime before. And they steal a scroll. We fast forward to some music from probably a 80s sitcom as a young Jeff Bogart is helping a bunch of children and a young Terry and Andy Bogart are watching from up above. Out of nowhere, this little girl is offering Jeff Bogart some flowers. And just as he's ready to accept the flowers, the mafia shows up with knives ready to stab him. The children hold Jeff Bogart in the place, which is wild. So these children are aiding a murder. Somehow he's still fighting them off with the children holding on to his legs. And he still manages to kick one in the face before getting stabbed by another one from behind. And he still kicks this man in the back of the neck. And Jeff Bogart is a demon, ain't he? So blood falls all on top of Lily's face, which is the name of the little girl who offers him the flower. And a young Geese Howard shows up and he challenges a stabbed Jeff Bogart to a fight. So Jeff Bogart's dead now. It's crazy these little kids just aided in his murder. Like that is wild. So Master Tongue, along with a young Terry and Andy, show up very late as Geese is already back in his car and is driving off, and the little boys cry over their dead father. Apparently the men who stole the scroll stole it for Geese, so it's revealed that Geese stole the scroll to learn some secret technique. Why he still needed to kill Jeff Bogart, I have no idea. But we learned from Terry in this exposition diarrhea that Geese was jealous of Jeff Bogart because Jeff Bogart was chosen to learn the secrets of Hakioku Seiken, I believe is how it's pronounced. Terry also asked Master Tongue why didn't he do anything to stop Geese. That's a very fantastic question because they really just stood around while it happened. I get why the kids didn't jump in, but come on now. Master Tongue says he wished he could have did something to help him. Like he could have. He literally stood there and did nothing. So he tells the two kids that they're too young to fight Geese Howard now. Obviously, you know, you're a martial arts master. You're kind of old enough to fight him. Like, who wrote this? So he sends them both on a journey to complete their quest to learn martial arts. And he promises to teach one of them the secrets of Hakyoku Seiken. I believe, once again, I could be pronouncing that wrong. I think I am. Why don't you just teach it to them both? Why only help out one brother? This makes no sense. Why is it that only one person can learn this secret technique at a time? This is kind of why Jeff Bogart was killed in the first place. Anyways, we fast forward in time to an adult Terry Bogart. By the way, one of my like top five fighting game character designs of all time. And we arrive at the Pow Pow restaurant where Geese is being bribed with money for the King of Fighters tournament that's coming up. So Geese gets tipped off that Terry's arrived in the Pow Pow restaurant. And they watch as Terry gropes a young woman that's walking past. This dialogue is awful. Oh man, she is such a babe. I can't stand it. So everybody immediately starts simping for whoever this Lily girl is that suddenly appears inside the restaurant. She fights off Billy Kane when he tells her that she needs to go back to her room. As she also throws out a rose for, I don't know, I guess a random man to do something with it. It's never really disclosed, so I guess you can use your own imagination. Anyways, Terry gets the rose. Why not? Lily says he's such a gentleman. This guy that was just groping women not even like five minutes ago, but whatever. So all the guys get jealous and start threatening to beat up Terry Bogart. And of course, a fight breaks out. Obviously, Terry is going to beat up each and every one of these men in this bar. I'm assuming this is like a bar and restaurant. Well, was a bar and restaurant. WWE style, this man grabs a chair and is about to try to swing at Terry with it. Then we cut to Joe Higashi, who's randomly sitting up, seemingly asleep in the bar. Or at least he was until somebody was thrown at him. Now Joe shows up and he challenges Terry to a fight. By the way, Joe Higashi's dialogue in this animation is terrible. This almost rivals Lee in the Tekken animation. Like, this is very bad. I was having this fabulous dream. Now why'd you have to go and wake me up? So Terry and Joe square off. Right when Joe recognizes Terry's stance, the police show up and Joe throws a table at them. Never mind the fact that they have guns. So Joe and Terry make a run for it. So cut to Terry and Joe running down this dark alleyway, or at least we think it's them, before it cuts to them hiding behind a bunch of trash. 
The two suddenly agree to go get a drink after it's revealed to Joe that Terry is Andy's brother. Andy and Joe are friends and rivals of each other. It's another animation with a plane that's like flying right over top of buildings. I had just pointed that out in the Street Fighter anime, but in any event. So Terry and Joe have a horrible martial arts conversation. Once again, Joe's dialogue is abysmal. The way that kid fights, he's as sharp as a switchblade. He's so cold, man, it's scary. Joe reveals that Andy is practicing Kipokin, and now Terry reveals that he's in Japan to link up with Andy, who's supposed to be arriving tomorrow. Also, for the record, the King of Fighters tournament logo looks very ripped off of the old school 90s SummerSlam logo. Could be a coincidence. Billy Kane identifies Terry to Geese. And now we cut to the very next day where Lily is helping out, I'm assuming, orphan kids. Terry tries to walk up to her and have a conversation. She's very rude to him for some reason. Okay, so the dialogue between Lily and Terry is awful. So Terry keeps talking about how Lily is a, a bird that's trapped in a cage. He says this over and over in this animation. It gets pretty annoying. Lily also harps on and on about how the kids would just be happy to talk to anybody that gives them a smile. It's very shoehorned in dialogue. Anyways, for whatever reason, Terry refuses to reveal to Lily that he was there when Lily aided in his father's murder when they were children. So Geese instructs his driver to start following Terry as Lily gets into his car. Lily kisses Terry's hand to make up for the thorn that stuck him when she gave it to him the day before. It's drawn very weird, it almost looked like she was either going to kiss his hand or sniff it, which is what I initially thought was happening, it looked crazy at first. So even though Terry has been talking about her this entire time like he knew her and calling her by name, it doesn't dawn on him who she is until after she drives away. They made it seem like he knew this entire time. So now Terry gets attacked by Andy for no reason at their father's gravesite. By the way, I hate the way Andy looks in this anime. I don't know whose idea it was not to give him his costume from the games and to give him blue hair. It's almost as if somebody said, okay, Andy's the secondary brother, so let's make him look like a loser. Oh, useless Master Tongue shows back up. He stops the two brothers from fighting. I don't know why. He only promised to train one of them. Master Tongue tells him he sees that they've mastered their own styles of fighting and have surpassed their fathers. All they did was throw two punches that didn't connect, so how he's determining this, I have no idea. So now we get this crazy dialogue from Master Tongue. Everything he says in this anime pisses me off. He says he's going to explain a technique that is so sacred it was never written down. <laughs> Whatever that means. Okay. It's the hurricane punch, and it's apparently the only thing that's going to defeat Geese. And once again, he reiterates that he's only going to teach this to one fighter. He said he only wants to teach the finest fighter the technique. This is still useless to me. If you need to kill geese, wouldn't it make sense to teach the both of them just in case one of them screws it up? Which, let's be honest, is gonna be Andy. Case in point, Andy immediately challenges Terry to a fight, and these two idiots are eavesdropping into the conversation, and they're not subtle about it. Instead of going after them, Terry just asks Andy, does he want to fight in the King of Fighters tournament? So Andy agrees once he realizes that Geese is going to be there, and we cut to later on that evening. So Geese picks out that Jeff Bogart's sons are participating in the tournament. Lily recognizes Terry. Still not revealed if she just recognizes him as the guy from earlier or whether she recognizes him from childhood. Who really cares, to be quite honest? It's now revealed to Geese that in the conversation that was overheard from Terry and Andy earlier, that the secret technique was never written down, so the scroll that Geese has is completely useless. That's gotta suck after all these years realizing that you didn't really learn any special technique after all this time. So Jeff Bogart basically got murdered for nothing. But anyways, he said he's laid a trap for Andy and Terry in the King of Fighters tournament, so we'll see if that works or not. So it's the day of the tournament. We see Ryden German suplex a guy in the tournament. Geese is already planning to manipulate the tournament. Then in a weird twist of events, he sends Lily to deliver a bottle of some sort to Terry. As we then cut to Joe winning his first round matchup. Andy then went his next match. His appearance is bothering me so much. For the record, this is what Andy is supposed to look like. Lily just breaks into Terry's room while he's sleeping. Terry starts telling her to come out of her cage. He's just gonna keep repeating this. He asks her for a drink, guessing he knows it's a setup. Right before he takes the first sip, Lily slaps it out of his hands, revealing that she obviously spiked it. And she cries in his arms. 
And they share this random kiss at the exact moment that Terry is told that he needs to get ready for his fight. And of course, he can't leave the room without telling her one last time that he's going to free her from her cage. So, Terry's fighting Richard Meyer next. Geese is upset that Terry actually made it to the next fight. And he sent someone after Master Tongue, and they have yet to discover him either. So his plan is just outright not working in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Master Tongue, by the way, is actually hiding in the crowd. We get more awful dialogue from Joe. This dialogue is so bad. It's weird, you know? You fight like an animal, all bearing your fangs and stuff, while Terry's more solid, like a tree or something, with his roots sunk in the earth. These fights are awful, by the way. But Terry beats Richard with the rising tackle, which doesn't really look like it the way it's drawn. Or it could be wrong, it's just the way they chose to show it as odd. So we see little images of the fighters progressing throughout the tournament. Yeah, that's definitely the SummerSlam logo. Now we cut to snipers at the roof of the building aimed at Terry and Andy. This tournament certainly took a turn. So the reason for the snipers is to kill either Terry or Andy before they can be taught the secret technique. Joe somehow notices in this giant building the snipers at the top of the arena and he jumps in between the sniper shot so Joe gets shot as the lights go out in the arena. When the emergency lights are cut on, Andy, Terry, and Joe are gone and Geese orders his men to seal off all the exits. We see Lily's helping them escape. This tournament certainly escalated quickly. Having recently watched the Tekken tournament where the tournament takes place and the movie slows down to a crawl, this is not happening here. Too bad a lot of the dialogue in this movie is stupid, but in any event. Terry climbs down from this ladder with Joe on his back, Andy climbs down next, and then Geese arrives. Terry's yelling at Lily to climb down. She's gonna come down, alright. Have you forgotten? You owe me your life for rescuing you from the slums, ungrateful bitch. Geese shoots her and she falls head first on the concrete. I'm amazed she's even still able to talk to him and shed tears. She should honestly be dead immediately. But of course she has to wait and die in Terry's arms. Geese is an asshole in this anime. So now his men show up with Raiden. And then Master Tongue shows up in a jeep ready to run them over. I cannot make this up. So everybody hops in the jeep for whatever reason they are carrying Lily's body with them. Billy Kane somehow st <laughs> stabs through the windshield and hits Master Tongue in the chest. And Master Tongue is just completely unconscious now. Seriously, he hit him in the chest with a cane and I guess he's about to die. They now have Master Tongue in a hospital. They said his lungs have sustained severe damage and he's in a coma from that one shot. They're now saying that there's nothing they can do to save him and he's not going to make it past the night as Andy suddenly runs out of the hospital. And then Master Tongue immediately grabs Terry by the arm so these doctors are useless. Joe seems to be healing a lot better from a sniper's bullet than Master Tongue did from a poke to the chest. Andy and Joe are now going to avenge Master Tongue and Jeff Bogard, so they're going to fight Geese. We cut to Master Tongue and Terry outside of the hospital, where Master Tongue reveals that he chose Terry as his disciple, so he's going to teach him the technique. He says he's not teaching Andy because Andy's too much like Geese and he's controlled by his emotions, which is not wrong. He tells Terry to clear his mind of all emotion and desires. I guess that's the technique, I'm not sure. So he says he's going to show Terry the hurricane punch that uses all of the key from within the earth in order to achieve this technique, which makes sense, I guess. So Master Tongue begins his Super Saiyan transformation as Terry now tries the technique on his own and he fails at it. Master Tongue tells him not to be like an animal, be like a tree and feel the force of Mother Earth at his feet. So Terry just reminisces about Lily and somehow this gets the job done. Maybe since Lily's dead, he's summoning her spirit. I don't know. Then this happens. So Master Tongue hits Terry with the technique that's supposed to defeat Geese before he fights Geese. So that's genius. And as it turns out, Master Tongue has died on his feet. Thank you, Master. I'll never forget. <laughs> this dialogue is awful. <laughs> So now we cut to Andy and Joe, who have arrived at wherever they've now showed up at, where all these guards are. And Andy fights them all off, which of course he does, they look more generic than he does. As Terry has apparently hijacked the motorboat and is traveling to the location of, I guess, Geese's hideout. 
And those are a lot of steps that Joe and Andy have to run to get the geese, by the way. So Billy Kane challenges Andy, and Ryden challenges Joe. Joe, who, by the way, has not properly healed from the sniper shot. And with the one attack, Joe is already incapacitated. Billy Kane then hits Andy with the same technique that seemingly begin the death of Master Tongue. So Geese is warned about Andy and Joe's arrival, but he doesn't care because he's feeding the fish. Once again, not making this up. So Andy takes out Billy Kane, and Joe finally takes out Wyden. So Joe says that they've avenged the death of Master Tongue, but Andy remembers that they still need to go after Geese. I'm glad they did remember that. So Terry arrives just in time for Andy to fight Geese, and we get this sequence of dialogue, which is... I don't want to risk this on YouTube, but I'm about to let this play anyways. I suppose I'll have to dispose of you myself as a memento to Jeff Bogard. You're going down, man! Yeah! Rep who can. So Andy's done. One single hit. Honestly, I really don't know what Andy even thought he was thinking, but whatever. By the way, Andy survives this, but Master Tongue couldn't survive. <laughs> So now Terry challenges Geese and hits him with a power wave. Oh, or so he thought. Then he misses a burn knuckle. So he's just running through all of his techniques on Geese right now. Somehow from this little interaction, Terry is already like seriously wounded, not really understanding how. We get another Repuken and Terry blocks it and he attempts the hurricane punch and it fails. But now Terry's gonna do it again and he summons all the dead people as he attempts it. But now he tries the same technique, but he says hot oh before he tries it, so of course it has to work now, right? And it's over. Geese is gone. He literally only hit Geese one time. And now we cut to the sunset. And Andy, Terry, and Joe, I guess Team Fatal Fury, pays their respects to all the dead people from this anime. And then they all go their separate ways. And that's the end of the anime. This is really, really, really bad for the record, but I honestly suggest any fighting game fan has to try to find this. And I specifically mean to find the dub version too, because it's so awful. Before I get out of here, I just want to play back Andy get knocked out by Geese one more time. It's really hilarious to me. You're going down, 